Uh, this episode is made possible by my new Masters Academy, the world's absolute number one online art school on the entire planet. Click the link, link, click the link down below for a free seven-day trial. Thank you to Masters Academy. If you enjoy coffee and you are currently striking, I suggest you save your money from the overpriced bullshit in the commissary and invest your money in Jeremy's coffee i.e. coffee brand coffee coffee brand coffee gives me a big old kick in the keister to get my day started to join the picket line and go hoorah 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 pay me more if you would like five percent off your entire order click the link down below and enter code honey and absinthe at checkout enjoy your coffee enema babies yeah, i am deep in the annals of your mind i am deep in the annals of your Hey everybody, welcome back to the Honey and Absinthe After Hours podcast. We're your hosts, I'm Vincent, a background designer for the Hollywood animation industry, which is currently under a writer's strike. And I'm Janet, the ex-Disney artist turned independent creator, and this is a podcast about all things art, business, and whatever we feel like. Now today, today we're going to talk about Hollywood writer's strike in the year 2023, and how this affects creative folk. But before we get into it, touch my bells and buttons. Janet's looking a lot like Sarah Theranos, so click that bell and button and uh, help the algorithm do its thing. Hey, how are, how, how, how are you doing, everybody? It's been a while. We've had these windows installed. It kind of derailed our lives a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we are back on track. But you know what's not on track? The Hollywood industry, the Hollywood machine, the evil empire. Why is the evil empire not doing its evil empiring? Because the writers are on strike. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone has even noticed. So <laughs> I wanted to talk about it. I want to explain why the writers are striking and go into details about what the contract, the supposed contract was going to be and why the studios and the writers weren't able to come to an agreement. And then I want to have a very real conversation about what I think is going to happen. Um, because I think this is going to change everything going forward. I think when the writers come back off of strike, um, the audiences might not know why content is going to be changing and why just Hollywood in general is going to change. And I think it, it is going to affect creators. I think it's going to affect everyone in a really, really, really big way. Um, so first, what exactly is happening? We've been paying attention to the writers potentially striking for like a month now. Um, and officially, the writers voted to strike because their contract negotiations were up in the air and the studios were basically not going to meet it. So they have voted to strike and they are currently striking. So for the people who aren't familiar with any of these comings and goings of Hollywood. What is a writer's strike? What are the writers doing right now? Are, are they writing the next season of Euphoria? Are they writing the next script for the Marvel's Blade movie? What are they doing right now? They are picketing because uh. they're basically every three years, the people in Hollywood negotiate their contracts. Um, I don't know if people understand what a contract even is <laughs> because I didn't know okay when I was little I didn't know how getting hired works and getting hired in every single industry every single job is kind of different specifically in Hollywood let me actually let me first explain what a contract is for all the people who have never worked a job in their life <laughs> If you're currently in school and your teachers are telling you that you will have a job one day in the Hollywood industry, what is a contract right. that everybody who has to do Hollywood stuff has to, you know, sign eventually? Yes. So when you start working, you go into your job interview, you do great, and your employer offers you a job. Back in the day, companies would offer you a contract that 
tells you how much you're going to get paid, whether you're a salaried employee or whether you're a freelancer or whether you are paid hourly versus um, how many vacation days and how, how does, um, d does the employer pay for your health care. All that stuff is in a contract. Um, it is different with every industry on how this contract comes about. Some industries, you negotiate it on your own. Some industries, there isn't really a contract. Um, it's it, like freelancing, you, you come up with your own contract and you have people sign it. Um, in Hollywood, you, there are unions and guilds and they negotiate your contract for you, essentially. Um, sometimes it happens every year, sometimes it, it depends on the guild. In Hollywood, it happens every three years instead of every year. and what our guild basically does is it negotiates guild minimums meaning when you go into when you get hired for a job there's a minimum amount they're allowed to pay you they can't go below that um arguably you can negotiate higher rates on your own but it unless you're a really sought after human being artist writer whatever um you don't really do that so actors will have agents do that for them, essentially. essentially. Uh, for people like laborers like us, we have guild contracts. So they will negotiate health care, all that stuff for us. So basically, when we after the interview process and they go, we want to hire you, there's not really much you do other than just sign the contract. Well, no, no, no. Let's say they, they go like, oh, we're going to pay you 1300 bucks a week. We get to go like, hey, 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 hey. That's way below guild minimums. Yes. And then therefore, we get to complain to the guild. The guild complains to the studios. And then um, then we have our uh, rates raised to the minimum if, right. if they try to lowball us. The dumb people, usually the, the kids out of college or art school, will go like, oh, yeah, 1300 I I, oh, yeah. I'm getting paid. Hooray. I get to tell my parents that I work in big animation studio and I'm not homeless in the streets. Yeah. So if you are unfortunate enough for the studios to basically break the rules and hire, you just accept a, a contract below guild minimums, I'm pretty sure there's nothing you can do about it. Um, I mean, you could probably complain to the guild and then you can get paid after the fact, but I, I really doubt it. Usually, um, the only stories I've heard at, around that is if someone knew that complained during an interview when they asked, oh, how much am I going to get paid? And they said this amount, um, and it was below guild minimums, and they're like, hey, it's below guild minimums, and then they're like, uh huh. Let me let me do the thing that the animation people like to do. I've always wanted to do this. Okay. In my seven years of experience, let me do one more one more time one more time. In my seven years of Hollywood experience, what they do is they really really just give you the minimum. They yes. don't want to get in trouble. They don't want to rock the boat. So they're gonna give you the absolute minimum. And I've tried going. Can I have like a little bit more? And then they go no. Yes. No. And, beca and because then you go like, th then you have nothing you could do. <laughs> yeah, unless you say like, well, so this other studio or this other company is offering me more. And then the company either values you. Or they go like, fine, go there. I don't yeah, care. yeah. Um, I'll hire some scrub <laughs> from college. <laughs> from CalArts. Yeah. Um, which that's, that's exactly what happened to this person that I knew who basically complained, that's below guild minimums. They ended up just hiring someone else <laughs> who was dumb enough to accept the below guild minimums rate. Um, yes. Is this DreamWorks? This was DreamWorks, yes. Mom and Dad, I work for DreamWorks. <laughs> Love me, please. But Netflix is notorious for doing that too. Um, Yes, so unless unless you really believe that you are like some big name <laughs> in your particular field. If um, you in your mind think you're Chris Sanders. Right, or I don't know. Paul some, Felix. Whoever, yeah. Um, good luck trying to be like, well, I'm worth more. <laughs> there, you, you are easily replaceable. Um, so... This this happens. This negotiation happens every three years for people in Hollywood, um, and 
the time for the writers is up, so they negotiate. They tried to negotiate. They had some complaints, um, and their complaints were not met, so they they voted to strike. Now, that's the gist of it. I want to go into the details of what their complaints were and basically what they asked for as a solution for their complaints and what the studio response was. <laughs> because this kind of affects your opinion of the writers and the studios and I'm gonna give you, we're gonna give you our opinion of the studios and the writers, I guess, as we're explaining all this. Um, because it's just, it's just crazy. It's crazy right now. Everything is, is changing because of a lot of th things. Um, so first of all, the writers, they have been complaining about what they call mini rooms for a while. Uh, there has been a decrease in writing jobs. Actually, if the writers weren't so narcissistic, it, there has been a decrease in jobs in general in Hollywood um, because of streaming, the move to streaming, and a lot of technological advancements as well. So back in the day, you would have things like X-Files, you would have Lost, 24, uh, other procedures like Law and & Order and stuff. Um, these types of shows used to have giant casts of writers writing these shows because they were 24, 25 episodes long per season. Um, and they would go for the entirety of fall or spring. Um, they only stop for one season, maybe summer, usually. Yeah. Um, and, like, you know, having a little break during winter or something. Um, during, whereas now, streaming, think of, like, any TV show, most, how, how long are those seasons? Currently 12 episodes. Whereas mm -hmm. in, when we were little kids in high school, they used to be 24 episodes mm -hmm. per season. 24 episodes of Fringe or mm -hmm. X-Files or something right. like that. And because of the way streaming shows are created, it, they're bingeable. They're not weekly things, affairs, where you sit in front of the TV at 6 p.m. every Wednesday and you watch whatever you watch. Um, you Netflix, for example, releases all of Stranger Things all at once. Um, so... Before, when things were weekly, writers actually would write the episode pretty much like the week before. So for the entire fall season, they were employed for the entire, I don't know, three, four months. Um, and then they have a little break and then they continue writing for the next three, four months. They were basically employed most of the year whenever the TV shows were happening. Now, because you have to create the entire TV show in like a bulk format they're employed for as long as it takes to write the entire season which is probably like a month maybe two months <laughs> um and that's and that's it like they're not employed for the rest of the year let's say um and because of the shorter episodes and all of the changes with streaming um many rooms were created where before it was like maybe six at, at the minimum, six amount of writers for a TV show like Law & Order, let's say. Now, it's like two or three. You have the head, like the head writer or the showrunners, and then you have maybe two or three staff writers, which is entry-level writing um, positions, basically taken up by people straight out of college because they're cheap. Um, so the writers have been complaining that there are fewer and fewer jobs there's no real upward trajectory because between staff writer and essentially um, showrunner, there's really nothing in between anymore. Um, so once you have been employed, you're, you're, you've been employed for your first job, you're so happy, you're getting paid a boatload of money straight out of college. Mom um, and dad love me, I work <laughs> for Netflix, please. Once you enter a different pay bracket, because again, there are guild minimums, you're no longer staff writer rates, you are, I don't know, mid-tier writer rates, no one wants to hire you because they can just throw you away and hire the latest, greatest graduate from, from USC or something. Um, <laughs> Mom and dad, I'm $3,000, $300,000 in debt. Please love me. I work for Netflix now. 
Right. So there, there are fewer jobs, fewer opportunities to climb the ladder, fewer number of weeks employed. So a lot of writers have been complaining on Twitter specifically that they have to go like getting one job is fine, but then they'll have to go years before their next job. Um, and the kind of trending argument right now all the high profile actors and people who are like trying to like promote help promote the writers like we want the writers to be paid fairly but let me let me tell you how much writers get paid and it's a lot let me let me tell you how much i get paid okay in a studio that rhymes with schmartoon get work Mm -hmm. Uh, i get paid about uh 1900 dollars a week and that's like with tax with without tax Mm. with 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 tax that's like (laughs) fucking the government that's like oh like 1400 (laughs) you know what i mean yes yeah so Um, how much do the writers get also you you will probably get paid that much too uh yes so uh if if you want to be an animation person an entry level staff writer position gets paid for $1,500 $1,500 a week. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I have to like work for a whole, like what, like four weeks just to... Just a whole month, yeah. A whole month. An entire, like wow. what a writer gets paid in a week, uh, artists in Hollywood gets paid in a month, and most people in the United States get don't get paid that much. <laughs> um, so if you work at the local diner or the gas station, or the grocery store, or you're a plumber, a woodworker, a handyman, you are playing the smallest fiddle for the writers during the writer's strike. Yes, because, like, when they say get paid fair, get compensated fairly, I'm just like, you guys get paid a lot of money already. This is crazy. And so, like, that's, that's, like, entry-level staff writer, okay? And then everyone else, like, above entry-level, gets paid about $7,400 a week. <laughs> a week. <laughs> I'm just... When I, when I saw those numbers, I was like, oh. I became the wrong creative in Hollywood. <laughs> I should have been a writer. I, I don't know. <laughs> we, we, you and I have trained to be able to paint what we see, to draw the human figure, both clothed and nude, and to design things that our hearts and minds can whatever dream of. And these people write with words. Yeah. And they get paid residuals, and they get paid th- four times more than we do. I don't see what the big deal is. Right, so... Um, Other than, you know, the title of writer is such a prestigious, um, brown-nosing title that, 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 that people in Hollywood really love to, you know, portray themselves as. Yes, it's a very, very, very prestigious thing to call yourself a Hollywood writer. Um, it's So, like, when they say we want to get paid fairly, they want to convince the public that they're, like, broke-ass human beings but what they mean is a hundred fifty thousand dollars a year is does not pay like it used to pay writers get residuals and the problem with streaming is okay first of all if you don't know what residuals are it's basically royalties every single time a tv show is played on tv the writers get a cut of the money so that's why it's really lucrative to be a writer, whether you're selling books or whether you're selling whatever it is you're selling as a writer, you get residuals, screenplay, playwrights, they all get royalties. Um, artists do not. We, we draw hourly and then th- that's it. We don't get residuals for seeing our work on the TV every single time. Um, our writers really love their residuals because that means they can go for many, many weeks, years, unemployed, and be fine. For example, J.K. Rowling, she's like rolling in the residuals. Um, with streaming, because it, they did, they negotiated some residuals, but it's not anywhere near the kind of money that network TV was, um, gave. So, <laughs> 
basically writers are complaining that they're not making as much money in residuals as they did before um their lifestyle has is, has been decreased royally uh so all of this is on the table on top of ai ai has made it so a lot of creative white collar jobs are are being um what's the word eliminated <laughs> People have been saying writers are facing an existential crisis with their with their jobs. Will their jobs even exist in a few years because of AI? What if AI can just write scripts, especially procedural scripts, where like a show like Law and Order has been on TV for decades? <laughs> you can probably train AI to know what a Law and Order episode looks like, sounds like, and then it can just write a script for you. In fact, The Hollywood Reporter tried it on 30 Rock um, and made a clickbaity article about that. Um, so cr writers are very upset about AI. They don't want them AI to be replacing their jobs. They also don't know how the residuals are going to work because obviously you're gonna fight tooth and nail for your residuals if you get paid to do nothing um, so this th these are all the problems um, now I'm going to talk about <laughs> how the writers had the gall to ask for what they asked for um, in the contract that was basically released that that was dead on arrival um, so first of all, to, to solve the problem of the, the mini rooms, the like two or three writers in a room, that to, they, are at, they asked for guaranteed six to 12 writers for a TV show based on the number of episodes in a, in a show. So <laughs> they're forcing the studios to hire six to 12 of them, depending, <laughs> minimum. And I was like, I, I, is there an industry where you can force a company to hire a minimum amount of employees? I, I was just like, this, this is, so when they asked for that, the studios were like, I, we can't even counter that's such a ridiculous ask. So they didn't. Um, and then they asked for a guaranteed minimum of weeks employed. Um, as low as 10 weeks, as high as 52 weeks. The reason <laughs> I, I, the reason why they are asking for a minimum amount of weeks employed is because they don't want to be gig employees and they want mentorship. They want basically to be able to be able to be mentored and to get the work experience um, from being a staff writer to becoming a writer, producer, showrunner. Hey, wait a second, man. I'm a gig employee, man. What's <laughs> the difference really between me and you, man? I know how to draw a naked man and woman. And what do you know how to do? Fucking write words. <laughs> I, I, when I heard about this, I was like, what are you going to do in the weeks you're employed where you're done with your job? Yeah, look, look, look. When, when when the old school TV stuff was happening, and you you know watch something like X Files or Lost, uh, I think X Files is a better example because like you're or, or even South Park, you're literally making the thing week per week. But when you're doing a streaming thing like Wednesday, you ideally have the entire thing done so you could show the studio, the studio could greenlight it, and then Jenna Ortega cultural phenomenon bing bang boom the problem is is uh, what the writers don't like is that uh they only get paid for basically giving the studios the vision of what what the whole series is going to look like but 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 they get to twiddle their thumbs <laughs> they get to twiddle their thumbs in the meantime in the meantime while the show is being produced it's not like things of yore when you know they're shooting x-files literally two weeks before the actual episode comes out on tv mm -hmm. this is not how this works anymore you have the whole thing done and i just don't understand what the writers want to do in the time when the show is being shown to people i i, I don't understand what they want to do yeah, they just want to sit there and like twiddle the thumbs and get paid. Like I, like I before. Like, we have to like draw the thing, 
The grips have to like stand there in the sun. They want to just hover over it. And the writers want to be under a fucking umbrella. Uh, entitled piece of shit, you know, like fucking like going like, hmm, shut up, Jen Ortega. You can't tell us to punch up stuff. Um, yes, I was like, I, I too would like to have a minimum amount of weeks employed. <laughs> but but like, we, we don't. We don't, yeah. <laughs> we don't even know how long we're employed. Yes, we don't. Like, that's, that's the sad part. Like, I, I go like, man, writers truly are... Um, the have the audacity <laughs> to ask for that. I don't know like anyone else in any other job that can be like I want you. I want to force you. I to demand hire, you to hi- like like the hire again hiring like a tradesperson and the tradesperson going like I know I'm just a plumber and I fixed your toilet already, but like I want you to continue to hire me for like another few weeks just because I want to make sure the shit flushes down the toilet. Yes. And I want to be there every single time. Yeah. That's essentially what the writers yeah, essentially, are asking for. Essentially, yeah. Every time you flush, you need to like come uh, and and I need a watch. <laughs> I, need, I need to make sure it goes down well. Um, they were asking for four hundred twenty nine million per year increase of residuals with streaming. Um, <laughs> that's practically half, almost half a billion. Um, of, of residuals they wanted uh they only got 86 million increase that's a huge difference the the, stream, the, stream, the studios were like we'll give you some residuals kind of like um ne- the network days but not we're not gonna give you ha- like where are they gonna get that money because a lot of okay a lot of creatives don't understand the difference between profitable and profit just because let's say a disney plus earned like billions and billions of dollars that year doesn't mean they were profitable they earned money yes but like it costs money to make a lot of these shows and they're actually a lot of these streaming services are in the negative for um for example hbo max was in the negative until apparently they're still in the negative technically but zaslav cut all those movies and tv shows and um took a lot of properties off of streaming so that he can save money so this year they're finally announcing that like they think they think they'll be profitable by the end of the year the only streaming service that has been profitable is netflix so outside all of these studios uh these two outside of netflix where are they going to get an extra half billion dollars to to pay in residuals i don't understand um so they didn't really get that they got a slight raise which is like the easiest lowest hanging fruit you can possibly get because you can't really negotiate your rates every three years uh, the guild minimums become a little bit too low every every year or so. So by the time negotiations are up, every single time guild, the guild is going to negotiate slightly higher rates. They were asking for a 6% raise in minimums. The studios are only willing to give about 4 to 2% depending on the job. Um, which, which, that is kind of a low blow. I, I'll admit that 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 is a kind of a low blow. They also, <laughs> the writers also wanted to create a new job title. Basically, writers between staff writers and basically writer producers. There's that huge like pay gap between you know 4.5k and 7.5k. Um, they want like something in between, and they basically wanted 25% more than the minimum. Uh, for of pay, the studios were only willing to give two to seven percent more for that new job in between job title, um, and then and then the, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that they asked for were that they wanted to force the studios to not use AI at all. You know, you're not allowed for the next three years to use any kind of AI in writing anything or doing anything. Um, in in what pertains to a writer's job, so so the the studios are basically like, no, no, just no. We'll we'll talk about it. 
but no, <laughs> we're not, we're not gonna agree to that. Um, so that's basically why the writers striked. They got absolutely nothing like the writers wanted so much and then the studios were like we're not gonna give you any of that because that, that all of that sounds so ridiculous and because they couldn't come to any sort of agreement they striked that is so <laughs> whatever weird propaganda you're hearing on tiktok or from the actor uh, not tiktok not twitter, even tiktok they're yeah, not on tiktok no they're not tiktok they're they're only on twitter whatever nonsense you're hearing on twitter whatever nonsense you're hearing from um the actors who are just trying to look good um that this is what is on the table i don't think most people know what is being argued um so Let's get into what we feel about it. <laughs> How do you feel about all this? I have the smallest fiddle playing for the writers. The like I don't know why the writers need to be paid this much in this world where people worship wh whoever on TikTok and whatever's going on on YouTube uh, more than ever in, in t than TV or, or, or movies. I don't know who's going to garner sympathy or who's going to feel bad for any of the writers. I just don't think this is the same world. The writers think that this is like 2001 and uh, newsflash, people don't really watch TV or the movies anymore. People like what they like on the screens, on the TV, uh, on, on the TikTok and on the uh, on the YouTube and on the Twitch. Um, if you guys, if you writers, if anybody in Hollywood even knew how much money random dorks inside their living rooms or, or whatever inside their studios were, were making just by putting on a camera and talking bullshit about politics and playing Mario Kart at the same time, uh, they'd be aghast. I'm, I'm pretty sure people like uh, Hassan, like uh, Destiny, make one trillion times more than the average writer at this point. Yeah. Uh, so writers, you're in the wrong industry unless you actually love the thing, which I, I don't believe you do. Um, and I'm, I'm just like, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm but a lowly artist. <laughs> I'm but a lowly person drawing backgrounds and painting them for the studios. And I really don't think like how much more special is what you do than what I do? And I know this is this comes to, comes down to like a phys philosophical um, question as to like uh, who deserves more, the people who comes up with the idea or the people who helps makes the idea happen. But um, I really don't see why you need to be paid four times more than me. I really don't get it. Mm -hmm. I really don't get why I have to be the one to physically make your shit happen. Why people hold cameras and boom mics and reflectors just to make your fucking bullshit happen. While you get paid four times as much as we do and um, and get residuals, which means that you could sit on your ass, twiddle your thumbs, and you get paid more than I do. I don't get it. Um, it's sort of like... You look at people like Zaslav and you go like, why the fuck do you get paid so much money? <laughs> and I look at you. <laughs> I look at you, motherfucker, and go like, why do you get paid so much money? Because without me, you'd be fucking nothing. You'd be nothing. There's words on a page. I, you know, I, I also think the... I don't really understand the argument of like... We go years between jobs because that's what they keep saying. When we Dude, that's like us. That's like everyone. Like, <laughs> motherfucker, you are so privileged in your high fucking ivory tower that you don't even understand the people below you. That's their life. Yeah. We have to fucking look for a job every single time a show gets canceled. Somebody somebody does something inappropriate and that show gets canceled. The show ends. We have to go from one show to another. And you you like it whatever you describe as to like um like I don't want to like go from show to show and it's so hard to it's so hard of a process to go from this show and when it's over go to that show. Like, this is the life. <laughs> of a laborer yeah like you don't understand because you are a privileged fuck like you just don't get it yeah. like like you don't understand who are the people who make your fucking bullshit happen 
But it's kind of amazing. <laughs> but it's kind of amazing that you can sit there and go like, oh, fuck you, David Zaslav. Where I'm going like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> you write words on a page, bitch. And I, I have to fucking go like, okay. The storyboard artists have to go like, okay, I have to visualize this and they fight scene. I have to visualize a family talking and somebody gets really upset. I have to fucking make that happen. I have to make that happen. Why is your job more special than our jobs, the laborer? I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I well, yeah. I I think like they they said something like, um, yeah, it we get paid a lot in like a year or you know the time you're on a show but then like i have to make it last for like two two to four years i'm like what the fuck the the target employee cannot make anything last (laughs) like you they work and then they pay their bills and then if they lose their job they have to go find another job what's stopping you from go finding another fucking job other than oh there's so few jobs in in Hollywood then get good then get (laughs) as if like that's the same problem I have that's the same problem we all have everyone in society has the fact that you can sit on your ass for like the next few years because you got paid like like crazy amounts of money for like a few months is amazing it's crazy like yeah people that's 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 like you're basically saying i want to keep that ability to do that and my, my ability to do that is starting to go away and like please people feel for me <laughs> people like, who have less you much less than me talking for, me. for people to people who work at walmart <laughs> you were talking to people who work at the burger joint flipping burgers like who the fuck is gonna <laughs> give sympathy to you and then before back in like what 2020 uh 2007 where when the last writer writer strike happened people got to complain where's my new episode of lost in 24 now people don't even have to fucking do that people are fucking going like oh what's charlie d'amelio doing or not even like what's what's the new advancements in ai i don't know whatever the fuck people are into it's not whatever the fuck you're writing yes I, it's just <laughs> it's it's just so amazing like you think you're that fucking important you know yeah that like someone who loses their their grocery uh bagging job has to go find another job and like the writers when they can't find another writing job it's like beneath them for some reason to go go like work at target or something so then they're like oh woe is me i have to live on 150k for the next four years my (laughs) life is so hard (laughs) it's like you can you can get any other job in the meantime i don't understand you're like complaining like oh i can't get another writing job like yes because the nature of your job is shrinking just like the nature of literally all our jobs are shrinking whether you like but it's like so amazing to see how all these people are like but we're different though yeah they're like we are the writers better You need you, the people who the lowly people need to support our ability, our ability to like live off of nothing, off of doing nothing. Um, that uh, like the, the the amount of entitlement it was just shocking to me. But like I just felt like, of course, all of this is only happening on Twitter. Like it's not. None of the conversation Dude, is happening anywhere else. I feel like you'd else. get pretty filleted if you complained about this on TikTok. Yeah, or, or anywhere else. Where everybody on TikTok is complaining where everybody's losing their job yeah. from tech or whatever the fuck they're doing. And then you go like, my job is 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 on a tightrope and, and I need to get paid more. No one's going to give a shit. Yeah. But, but in the ecosystem of Twitter where you feel nice and cozy and, and safe, you get to say bullshit like this. Yeah, because the way Twitter works is you're, you're, everyone is in their own little bubble. And when you... This is why Hollywood, Hollywood people love Twitter. When you speak, other people who want your job think that you can like somehow get them in somehow. So like you, you basically just get... like other people who work with you complimenting you this happens in animation twitter which i hate it like someone will just say some very random thing like have a tweet thread about like 
young storyboard artists should know these really, really basic ass facts, like like tips. Um, and you know, you know, the person doesn't really give a shit about young storyboard people. Like, no. Why do you think they're making this thread so that they can farm followers and likes and validation? Um, but like. And like they're friends, you see it in the comment. Like you know the if you know these people, you know they all hang out together, they all get lunch together, and they all know each other. They're all sucking each other's dick in the comments, and I'm just like, ew, <laughs> ew. Like it's kind of like when you're like showing your parents something you made, and then your mom goes like, oh my god, honey, you're so talented. Like that's that's how what I see. Like it. Of course your mom is going to say that. Of course your friends who work with you are going to say that. Like, it doesn't mean anything. It, like, it's not even, like, r to me, real validation. Like, from strangers who are literally going, like, oh my god, like, this is amazing. They, they genuinely think what it is is amazing. It's not even that. Um, and I just think it's, it's, it's so gross because all of this, this, this campaigning is not real campaigning because <laughs> there's no purpose to it if the purpose is to get the random people like societal pressure to pressure these studios to uh, agree with you and you get, would show up on youtube and tiktok yeah you show up everywhere but you're too pussy to yeah you just want your your dick to be sucked you just want your ego to be stroked um and that's why you don't venture out anywhere else other than basically instagram and twitter because you know that's that's the only place you will get support. Um, so I, I, I just think it's amazing. Um, when I was following this whole thing of whether or not the writers should strike, I thought no, because this is really dumb. We are in a bad economy right now. If you're not aware, everyone is getting fired right now. Like the, the layoffs are happening. Um, but, but Janet, the writers are special. Just making sure you remember. <laughs> oh, yes. They're so special. Um, shows are getting canceled. Profits are like... As shows are getting canceled, you're deciding to strike. It's like you're self-selecting. It's like you're, you're quitting for the people who want to fire you already. Um, and then the studios are going, oh, great. One less thing to worry about. Yeah. Um, so, like, recently, I've noticed that a lot of shows have been announced that they're getting canceled this week. Um, and I, I really hope it's a coincidence. If not, it, like, the studios specifically, it's, like, a lot of ABC Disney shows. Um, <laughs> D Disney could be just going, like, you're not, you're not, um, coming into work, okay, or canceling your show. It's not making money anyways. There's, you know, like like WB had to physically fire people and and lay off a ton of people so that they can finally go like, oh yeah, we're kind of finally evening things out. Mm -hmm. The the writers are are self selecting and deleting their own properties so that studios like Disney will go like, oh well, sweet, yeah, <laughs> we don't have to fucking worry about paying for the show anymore. Um, and so I just, I just thought it was not a smart time to strike. I'm a fan of strikes and stuff like this. Obviously, I'm the girl who quit Disney, but, like, I just thought, like, this is the stupidest decision you could possibly make. And, and it's especially in a time where AI is looming, like, you have absolutely no leverage. It's not like, like, times are different from the last time the writers striked was 2007. Um, that was when a lot of network TV was still really, really popular. Um, so a lot of the public was able to notice that when their shows, their normal shows they're, that they're huge fans of, they weren't playing. They were just playing reruns or all they had to watch were like reality TV shows or something like that. Um, now, there's plenty to watch on streaming. Because all these shows are have already been made. They're just like waiting to like put it out on a schedule. And and if there's no content on the streaming services, people will just go to social media. <laughs> let's let's like make the stark contrast between the lost era twenty twenty two thousand seven, two thousand five to to now. Um before you only had whatever primetime TV shows that were on and uh if you were 
lucky and you had cable or HBO, you'd have something like a Sopranos or something to watch. Mm -hmm. Now, if uh, Euphoria, oh God, God forbid disappears, or Wednesday, oh God, somehow disappears, uh, people, especially young people, can watch anime. They can think about or do whatever is uh, popular on the TikToks. Uh, they can see whatever their favorite streamer is doing. Uh, if you're an adult, you can at least finally start learning how to make baba ganoush on YouTube. Yeah. If, uh, if uh, God forbid, your favorite television show goes uh, off air for a few months, there's a lot of things people can do without television. There's a lot of things people can do without movies. And uh, the gall of you to think that you're that fucking important that the average person won't have alternatives this time around than, uh, than before. And I think you don't know this, but I think even the studios know this. Yeah. I think the people running things even know that like, you know what, these people, these writers are so far up their fucking ass that they don't even understand how different things are between 2005 and now. Yeah. So that I that's that's our um feelings on the matter. We're just annoyed because I'm not even done with oh. my feelings yet. Oh, okay. I think you guys are screwed. Like first of all, like the writers are screwed. That like this is like I remember telling you this as we were getting groceries today. I was like <laughs> I am well beyond the past of the 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 the, the vision of you writers getting fucked. And uh, what 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 is going to happen is because this is Hollywood, Hollywood's going to look good and give you guys like you know the most low hanging fruit just to look good mm -hmm. in front of the the trades and go like, "Oh yeah, we gave the writers what they wanted." But they're not going to budge an inch on AI or anything like that. They're going to say like, oh yeah, we're going to give you the money that you asked for. Meanwhile, three years from now, they're not going to hire you because they're just going to hire one or two people and then have uh, them punch up whatever AI bullshit um, that it comes up with. And the people who are thinking like, oh, like AI can't possibly, they can't possibly replace the writers. I think you're wrong. I think when we start getting to a point where the, the average person because this is what 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 the average per, average person is really concerned and thinks about the average person like our peers are very concerned that um the ai will replicate whatever famous artist from chris sanders to uh, tomer hanuka to uh to james jean to paul felix to glenn Keane. they can go and make whatever ai version of of Glenn Keane, and you don't have to hire a team of people who study Glenn Keane's work in CalArts, uh, and they could just get AI to make the next Disney princess. I think that is very shallow, surface-level thinking. I think what the ultra-creative people are thinking about and what the Hollywood execs are thinking about is what happens a little bit after that. What happens when you take somebody like Glenn Keane and you mix it with someone like Chris Hand Sanders and you mix it with somebody like Tomer Hanuka and then you get something new? And then you get to a point where like you can't even source. You like we we they come up with some something, anything, and they can't even source. You can't even as an artist source where that even came from because the AI is working at the level of a competent artist. Yeah. A competent artist doesn't look at Tomer Hanuka and go like, "I'm going to make Tomer Hanuka." They're going to go like, I'm going to make Tomer Hanuka versus uh, James Jean with a little bit of um, Joey Chewy or something, just making something fucking outrageous. And like for all the writers who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, what happens when the studios are able to go like, let's make something that is like Tarantino and then let's mix it with... Uh, 
Aaron Sorkin, and then, oh, 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 let's mix it with someone who's not even alive right now. Like, uh, how about Patty Chayevsky? And then, voila, a script. Oh, there's a little, uh, you know, inconsistencies. There's a little, like, you know, stuff that just doesn't work. Let's get an actual human being to, like, fix all that shit, and then let's make that fucking movie. You don't think that's above Hollywood? You don't think Hollywood wouldn't do that? Do you think Hollywood fucking needs you at that point? Do you think I am crazy and this will never happen? Dude, AI, if you're not paying attention, AI is getting freakier and freakier by the week. Yeah. And I don't even know what things are going to look like in three years. And you're telling me like, oh, Vincent, that's never going to happen. Oh, Vincent, oh, Vincent. Like this this world in which um, um, like... Like, you know, big people in, uh, you know, WB Music or even uh, big studios in um, in Hollywood or even public pub, uh, publishing houses won't get Kurt Vonnegut and mix it with um, Ilya Kazan. Like, this is possible now. And uh, I, I don't think that, like, we're, we as creative people are going to have to either embrace this AI thing or figure out a way to be different, figure out a way to convince the public how important it is to have an actual human voice with a human heart. Like for example, watching Bo is Afraid is like, I don't think AI could make Bo is Afraid. Like, I, I, like, I challenge you nerds and dorks on Twitter <laughs> doing your, let's make an AI community bullshit to make something like Bo is Afraid mm. on uh, AI. You're never gonna be able to do it, but, for the average person who listens to The Weeknd or <laughs> Drake with autotune, no one's going to actually give a shit. Yeah. And what do you provide as a writer, as a creative person who uses either pictures, lines, colors, or words? What are you going to provide to the table that the studio, within the next, within the end of the year, will, 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 be, will be able to like harness the creativity of the most talented people throughout history and make whatever. And do you think they're gonna fucking like accept you with open arms after all of this is over? I don't think so. Uh, I think my, so if we want to get into the whole AI conversation, my opinion on it is it's already too far gone. Um, I think that one of the reasons why I think the whole contract that <laughs> the writers asked for is so incredibly short-sighted and ridiculous is because I don't think they know what AI is capable of today, this very second, because they're so full of themselves and also so fearful of it. They and so kind of against learning a new piece of technology that they they refused to even engage because there's a huge push in the creative industries to be anti AI because of all this fear fear mongering the problem is AI is continuing it continue is going to continue to be developed whether you you like it or not because there's so many uses for it outside of like creative jobs um so as I've been keeping up with the developments week to week and it's insane it's insane it's um scary and cool at the same time we pay ten dollars a month for mid journey yes. and that shit's insane yeah and uh, it is only scratching the surface of what is possible. And uh, you and I are already really imaginative people. And we can imagine where this is going to go in probably even the end of the year. Uh, it's going to go somewhere fucking nuts. Meanwhile, these Hollywood writers think that, oh, AI can't possibly, possibly uh, replace us. Dude, AI is going to replace artists. Like, you don't. Really yeah. fast. <laughs> It, I think it's really, really important for anyone who is a creative person to get into AI now um, because you want to learn what it can do so you know 
ha- like how far gone this already is. Like to say like to force a studio to guarantee your job to exist when like there's a lot of things that exist right now that just make it ridiculous to ask for a lot of the things that they ask for. Um, it- it's just insane. It's just you're not going to get these things. Um, and that's why you're you're so ignorant to the fact of the reality right now that like it, you, you don't even know like what you're asking for sounds ridiculous. And then I can hear all of the uh, arguments of like, oh, you know, AI is not like a human being. The human being heart and soul and all that bullshit is so much more more valuable, more poignant to to the masses than whatever a machine can make. Do you think Hollywood gives a fuck? Yeah. We're talking about Hollywood. We're not talking about art and and uh, the human condition. We're talking about a business. Yes. What are they going to do to you? A cutthroat business that is- an evil empire, man. Currently, they they have gone full mask off <laughs> with this whole writer strike and they're showing like Holly, old Hollywood is back evil Hollywood is back and they're not even hiding that they're kind of evil evil yeah <laughs> it's amazing to watch um the reason why I think artists and creative people need to get into AI right now is because you won't start to understand that it's a tool and because we are really imaginative people you won't be able to see denying AI right now is the equivalent to basically trying to prevent the internet from happening. Or basically trying to prevent Photoshop from happening. Yeah. Um, which happened. Like, there were people who were like, the internet's totally not going to be a thing. Or oh, like, Photoshop's, Photoshop's not going to be a thing. Yeah. And they're not hired anymore. They, they, they disappeared. When your ego is so big to think that, like, you are better than these technological advances and you will be able to you will be able to survive you will disappear you will yeah <laughs> there are people who are like hell or high water they stuck to a sinking ship and unfortunately that they i don't know what they're doing i really don't know what what happened to them um nobody knows yeah so like and when you the thing is because we've started playing with these tools as artists there's a huge advantage to being an artist a a person who knows how to draw and paint or who knows how to truly write a good script let's say um to do to you're 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 trained to do these things all the existential part of this whole conversation is so stupid to me because i'm like do you really think if you worked for over a decade on this craft this skill that suddenly it becomes useless once ai becomes a thing that's a that's a you problem that's a that's how how lowly you see yourself if you think like all those years spent working on something is is all for naught because what you can bring to the table now by adding ai to your arsenal is so much more than what people who only know how to code and only know how to do AI can do. Like, they're, like if only an artist, only a writer will be able to look, be like, to feed basically AI what an Aaron Sorkin, a good Aaron Sorkin script looks like and a good Patty Chayefsky script look like. And then for the AI to pump out something that's a blend of, of all the influences you you want it to and then for you to look at it and be like that's a good script ai can't do that <laughs> an executive can't do that you as but, a creative you, director or, or yeah. a creative writer has to tell the ai to do that yeah and and to be able to say this is the next bow is afraid this is like you know what i mean i think the future of of the industry is like right now we're seeing people like Ari Aster and Damien Chazelle and the Softy Brothers like they're all these people new upcoming millennial essentially the next Spielberg David Fincher's Christopher Nolan like the new generation of big Hollywood names that you'll see forever and ever yes and like what is a creative person we are a combination of all of our influences for uh, you could be like I'm really into Truffaut and I really like Scorsese and I really like 
um, like these uh, Japanese cinema, Kurosawa, whatever, and you become a combination of these through all of your hard work. Um, that doesn't like y one day the studios will want to create a new Ari Aster, a new Damien Chazelle, which is a combination of all these influences. But an executive doesn't know what is good technically. They just n <laughs> they just want to make money. An artist does. A, a creative person does. A creative person can be like, I am a combination of these influences. I can become the next whatever, but I will use AI to help me. And so like, it's like saying like, I'm a artist that uses Photoshop. There are people who are like, you're not a fucking artist. You know, how, you know how to fucking paint. Like there, like there were literally people who said that. Okay, so like the people who are like, you're not a fucking artist. You use AI programs to help you. That's not how AI works, and it's never gonna be how art works. So it's just like it's ridiculous to me that artists are like handicapping themselves by not learning how to use these tools. Because what I would have asked for in the Writers Guild contract negotiations are okay. Because I know these techno th these tools exist today, and every week they're developing new and like tools that you can't even imagine. Um, three years from now, to to try to convince the studios to not use AI is fucking ridiculous. So instead, be like, okay, you can use AI, but if I become like a super uh, diverse person with all these skills, I can use AI. I, I know how to write. I know how to like do all these things. I have all this education and the, like you're hiring me for my ideas and my ability to use all this stuff because an executive is not going to sit there and like prompt AI. No. Um, but you, you can create a new job title and be like, well, you, if, if I know AI, you're going to pay me a lot. You're gonna pay me a lot of money because I'm a specialist. Like, but like, no, they have to be like, I want to keep my job the way it is. I don't want to have to learn new tech. I don't want to have to compete with AI or all this stuff. Literally, it's just nonsense to me. Um, so that's my feelings towards the AI thing. You don't even know what it's capable of today, which is why like the the studios just threw out your your negotiations like we're not we're not even entertaining this um yeah so let's talk about the studio response because it's it's savage <laughs> it's the most grimy disgusting i've ever seen hollywood <laughs> and i'm all for it because I knew deep down inside that this was the, the, the industry I wanted to work for. It wasn't the ones that were like, oh yeah, we're gonna like make really, really inclusive works for all the masses and we're gonna make really, really pretty puritanical shit. No, these people are rotten to the core. What examples can you give to the people that Hollywood people are just the shittiest fucking people in the entire world? And unless you're a shitty person yourself, uh, you would probably want to work with them. What, what kind of shittiness, what kind of shitty fucking behavior have you been seeing throughout the writer's, star, writer's strike? So first, the first things first, the uh, one of the Russos, right before the writer's strike was about to happen, was praising AI. And then all the writers got really butthurt <laughs> about it because they're like, oh, this is such a slap in the face. But I really don't think... It had anything to do with the writer strike. I think the timing of what the Russo said, if you were paying attention to AI, which was like this is right before uh, Mid Journey, what five point one yes. came out, and uh, a few advancements Gen in two, Gen two, yeah. um, they were, I assume probably talking about that stuff but because the writers are so fucking egotistical and they think everything revolves around them they thought the russos were talking about them yes but like no this i think hollywood has been trying playing with ai for for like at least a year now like <laughs> any that's what i mean by like by kind of bullying the fucking nerds into high, like going underground or being more strategic about the way they are talking about AI, you now are like blindsided by what, but by what AI can do. But like, I guarantee you, there are a lot of high up, uh, upper echelon Hollywood people that 
already are looking at what AI can do today and going like, oh my god, like we're gonna save so much yeah. motherfucking money, man. <laughs> um, so right after the writer's strike started, <laughs> Paramount, Netflix, NBC, basically put out public statements that they think no one's gonna notice the writers are on strike. <laughs> um. And I'm not sure that's e- that was even like throwing shade at the writers. I think they were literally just stating facts. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, uh, I think you're right because basically Netflix started bragging about how bring it on, we have a huge slate lined up. No one's gonna notice. <laughs> like we we have all these shows coming out. Who cares? And and Netflix at the exact same time signed a huge licensing deal or production deal with Korean studios, um, produ- Korean production houses because things like Squid Game and a lot of Korean dramas. World, what I said before that like media is a global thing now, and Hollywood is no longer competing with each other they're competing with india they're competing with korea they're competing with europe and you you you're competing with anime this is not you like you're so egotistical to think that like if squid game something that netflix basically licensed from korea did like so much better than whatever bullshit show that's getting canceled right now it's you have no you have no hope um, Universal was bragging about how well Mario was doing. Um, WB has Flash. Disney and WB, this literally yesterday I saw, um, they were forcing showrunners, basically writer producers, to work and to continue. That's why a lot of shows actually haven't shut down because the scripts are already done. And the they just have to go into production. The directors, the storyboard artists, the the gaffers and the grips and the actors, they're required to continue working. Um, so they're basically like, we're forcing showrunners to work. You don't have to write, but you have to work. You have to come into the show and do your producer role, which is the producer side of writer producer. Um, <laughs> I just thought that was so savage. They're like, you can't. You ha- they're basically like you are being forced to cross the picket line. And I was like, damn. Jeez. That's savage. And then they even said, because a lot of people were like, oh, well, like, good luck having, like, rewriting the script, like, having, like, dialogue changes and stuff like that. And then the studios are like, no. Like, that's that's actually not an illegal thing in term- when, when a strike is going on. You will have to do um, cer- some, like, dialogue changes. They'll figure it out. They'll man. figure it out. They, like, you writers think that you're the only people who could write things. Yeah. Like whatever. The, like the like it's there are literally ad lib things that end up in movies and TV shows anyway. What makes you think that they can't just like figure figure something out? What makes you think that like without you they have to stop everything just to just to figure figure one line out in the new Lord of the Rings bullshit or Game of Thrones bullshit? What do you think? What? Why do? Why do they need you? Explain to me why do they need you, and why are you so important? And like, so I saw a lot of writers and people using, for example, Jen Ortega, for, as clout and trying to like get the word out. Someone made a sign about how um, Jen. It was it said something like, "Without the writers, Jen Ortega would have nothing to punch up." Because making fun of her essentially to about how on Wednesday she was basically like I hated the script and I just was so against the way they portrayed the character so I just started changing everything and it made a lot of um, writers annoyed at her but like apparently the showrunners love her and everyone who works with her loves her and like a lot of what she said I think was kind of sort of taken out of context and it was just weird um but like the writers were saying were mocking her but then when they were called out for it on twitter they're like no 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 she's on our side we love her and i'm like typical hollywood they don't mean a thing they fucking say they can say they can basically say anything to like mock you and insult you and make fun of you and then they can just take it back and like basically oh i didn't mean it like that um but like 
the idea that you need a writer on set to to change dialogue lines small things like that when like an actor can do that Jen Ortega did it clearly and who's to say Tim Burton doesn't know how to fucking do that like I'm just like do you really think directors and storyboard artists also don't know how to do that do you really think actors don't know how to do that and then to shame actors and and people who also just want to like Hollywood always loves to say to me we just want to put food on the table but to shame these people who also just want to put food on the table for crossing the picket line what for you (laughs) they're gonna like starve for you I don't know I don't think so and I just I don't know I I just thought like damn (laughs) like Disney is like taking their gloves off specifically Disney they're like fuck you Come into work, showrunners. I don't give a shit that you're striking. And, oh, and also, because... This is something you predicted, actually. Because you specifically said no AI, the studios are now going to use AI just to spite you. So they announced... I forgot who announced that like they're, they're starting to try to use AI to create scripts of um, public domain properties and book properties. So they're feeding it, Rodal... And yeah. fucking J.K. Rowling probably. Yeah. And the uh, right now, right now, <laughs> just to spite you. And then they they're thinking about um, when the writers come back that they'll hire someone to punch it up or fix it or whatever. And I was like, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you can't stop it from happening. I don't know why you think you can stop it from happening. I, I was just like, this is this is amazing. The fact that the studios are outright just saying it, and then like they're not going to bend with the the ai issue they're not they're they're already using it like what are they gonna do like throw it all out just because you you strike for a certain amount of time you can strike all summer long and i think no one's gonna notice you can strike the rest of the fucking year i'm not sure anyone's gonna notice um i i don't think you have that much money (laughs) saved up i don't like even though i say that like for 0.5k to 7.5k is a lot of money. You'd be Dude, surprised. You fucking spend every morning at the commissary. You spend in it Burbank every week. Like these people. You don't live know how to, paycheck to fucking paycheck. They know how to save money. No one in Hollywood knows how to save money. They think that this like gold gold rush is gonna last forever when you start working because it's like the most you've ever gotten paid ever. I just, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, yeah. So that is the executive response. It's actually, we did predictions about what what the executive studio response is going to be. It's so much worse than, than we could have ever predicted. They're evil. They're, they're so much more not empathetic and psychopathic than I give them credit for. I can't, I can't possibly... Oh, but the industry is great, everybody. <laughs> See, everyone had so many great words to say about executives and the studios until now like three how many years has it been three years later janet was right janet was right (laughs) and like i just don't understand the people who wanted to tell me i was wrong who also work in hollywood i was just like but you know these people like what you you're gonna you're gonna tell me you're gonna tell me these people who are like like throwing you out to dry are are good people who are your friends who care about you who are gonna protect you when when shit hits the fan i'm like what are you smoking and why are you telling people that this is that that young impressionable new people in hollywood who are also running on envy and jealousy that like oh yes executives are your friends (laughs) they're not your friends they have never been your friends. It's just so, so incredibly, like, I I always say this. I don't like being right because it means evil always wins. <laughs> it means, like, I, like, I'm not, I actually am not rooting for the evil empire uh, to, to, to win. I actually am still on the side of stupid. I th- still think stupid can get something out of this stupid being the writers but like you you're you're on the side of of evil aren't you yes i'm on the side of evil i think you writers are going to lose and i have the smallest fiddle playing for all of you and i don't think uh i don't think the studios are wrong because i think 
everything you're asking for other than getting paid basically uh, to match inflation is is fair. I think you're asking for the most absurd bullshit. You're asking for uh, basically the lockdown and the uh, not even exploring the possibilities of what new technology could do because you think that it's going to replace you, which it can, which it might. But you believe so hard that you are that important that you could tell the studios that um, you are that important that this thing needs to disappear. This, this, this investigation into new tech and how it can help the creative process, how it can advance the pipeline. Um, you want that to disappear. Meanwhile, everybody else under you who's not a writer, doesn't have that fucking luxury. So forgive me for being fucking bitter that you, uh, that I'm rooting for your demise, that I'm rooting for you to fail because it's not like us laborers can ask for anything like that ever. It's not like we can ask for residuals or anything like that. It's not like we can't ask for AI to suddenly disappear because, um, nerds and dorks are putting, uh, all sorts of people's styles into the computer. I, we don't have that luxury. What makes you think that you should have that luxury too? And like, I don't know, like, because you are a writer and because you cannot think beyond yourself, I'd like to think that if I were in a studio, I would, and, and I were, let's say, head of uh, Disney, let's say, I would want to investigate every avenue to make money faster, better, stronger because it's not about art. You writers fucking think that this is about art? Motherfucker, this isn't the 70s anymore, man. This is this is right now and no one actually gives a shit about about the artistry of anything. Um and like it's not like I'm trying to be a doomer. It's not like I'm trying to be blackpilled. I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. These are heathens you're dealing with. Yeah. And you think that they're going to listen to your fucking reason. And you think that the people working at Walmart will listen to your fucking reason. I don't think so. So that's just my thing. I don't care. I just want to get paid. I just want to make my money. And I just want to invest in the things I can invest in so I can just fuck off. I don't care anymore. I don't care about, about this thing that we call Hollywood and art. I don't give a fuck that Del Toro says all these pretty nice things about uh, about about animation. Meanwhile, he has nothing to say about AI. No one has anything to say about AI and how we're being replaced. I I I think it's all a bunch of hooey, smoke and mirrors bullshit. And um, you can think I'm wrong. You can think I am overly pessimistic. You can think I am naive. You can think I am young. That is fine. I think you won't have a job. <laughs> okay? Well, I, you know, AI is leveling the playing field for everyone. Um, I think if writers or artists who think that you are so good and so irreplaceable and so whatever then make a thing using AI like writers I've noticed they've been talking about like oh time to work on my spec scripts or maybe we can like band together and do something um, together in the meantime or if whatever. they made anything worth a damn it would have been happening right now yeah so I'm like okay take your script and figure out how to make it real without an artist without a film crew without like you know the entirety of the hollywood machine behind you using ai because it's possible right now and that's what like entrepreneurs are like freaking out about They're, like, yeah they don't have what you have yeah they don't have the writing savvy or the ideas they just go like oh look i made a fruit cup in ai yeah but they don't have any of the wherewithal to figure out how to make a actual series or some or, or storytelling or how to pull at people's heartstrings with it. Mm -hmm. But you can. But you don't want to work with AI. Yeah. That's that's the that's like the great tragedy of it all. The people that I am aware of who are actually artists or um, filmmakers are people who have skills that normal people don't have, who are using AI to do things. 
they're starting to be able to do certain things all by themselves that an entire team of people used to be needed. And I challenge any creative person to be like, see what you can do. Because like an artist, someone who, let's say, only knows how to paint at this point can make animations all by themselves uh that you don't need you don't need a whole team to do you know those like kickstarters where people used to like try to get hundreds of thousands of dollars just to make a little animated short you don't need a hundred thousand dollars (laughs) anymore you need like ai and not even remotely the amount like half maybe half the amount of time that you you used to need to make instead of hiring like five animators you can be the five animators it's 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 insane instead of hiring a production designer to production design your little short oh, film but janet this was never about storytelling or pulling at people's heartstrings uh, or or whatever uh, this was about being a part of hollywood uh, this see. was about being better than people don't uh, you understand this isn't about telling good stories or creating art or creating art this is about telling mommy and daddy how I'm so much better than uh, the plumber or the person who works at Walmart, right? Yes, which is, so that's why I'm like, I'm not, even though I'm on the side of stupid, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't think you're going to win. Let's just say that. Let's just say in about a few months from now, I'm really interested to see how uh, gracefully or not the writers are going to lose. Um, because obviously they're writers. They're not going to be like, oh, we lost. They're going to like pretend like they won. Just like how the artists pretend like they won the whole anti-AI art thing. They didn't. They didn't. (laughs) Um, so yeah, it's, I'm interested to see what comes out of all this in about a year. Um, because I think we're going to be right. I think a lot is going to happen in the AI sphere in the next month, (laughs) much less than the next year. I can't even imagine. Um... What are we recommending this week? We are going to recommend Rick Beato's video about AI in the music industry and how it's going to affect things in the future. Uh, We both listened to this video and we both love Rick Beato. What did you have to think about uh, his observations about how this will affect everything? Basically predicting like AI is the new Napster of this era and it's going to disrupt everything in the music community. Beato basically took his knowledge of how evil the music industry can be and how people, the power struggle and everything that happened during the whole Napster era of things, how it played out, and he basically just translated it into AI. Um, And it's very similar to how I see what happened when a lot of production switched over to digital with artists. So instead of matte painters and maquette makers and ink and paint people and people who literally know how to flip pages to make animation happen, um, what happened when basically things were phasing into this ne- this next phase of movie making? Um, it's the exact same thing because we have somewhat insider knowledge of how cruel the industry can be. We can predict how exactly how scary and what what kind of crazy power struggles is gonna happen. Um, but also just like the realism. Um, I don't really see Beato's video as like, uh, oh, woe is me as a musician. I see Or being blackpilled going like, oh, it's all over. It's just fact. Yes. From his experience of how the studios have behaved and, and everybody has behaved and how money has been dispersed throughout history before and how long it took for the studios to get ahead of Napster, which they use streaming for now, Um, He just used that experience to sort of give us a peek into a future where AI is going to be a part of every facet of everything we listen to. When he talked about how before people were, you know, recording things on tape 
and using these giant amps that required man multiple man power to lift and to use now uh, they introduced plugins at a certain point they never went backwards <laughs> he's like that's just not how t technology works when people invented plugins people were selling all their equipment for really cheap and I feel the same way when Photoshop happened and we saw so many people kind of not want to hop on to the, tr the technology train. It's like an unfortunate thing, but like we see with in the music industry, people who know how to use amps and know how to use all these equipment, that knowledge isn't for naught. They, it, it translates to how to use plugins really well. There are some people who download plugins and don't know what the fuck they're doing. They just slap it on and go, like call it a day. Use a preset. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, um, that works. Like, I'm sure if you're into music production, you see those ads of those like kids <laughs> trying to make a quick buck on YouTube. Um, so you guys won't believe I have the secret sauce. It's called the secret sauce plugin. You put it on everything from drums to vocals, and it makes everything sound so much better. Yeah, that's like saying, like, oh, download this magical brush in Photoshop, and suddenly you're going to, like, <laughs> paint, like, like I don't know, Michelangelo. It's, it's just ridiculous. Um, so that's a really important video to watch. Uh, because I think it translates to every other industry in regards to AI. If you like this episode, make sure to like, subscribe, jingle all our bells and buttons, check out all these other episodes to binge all our other episodes, and we'll see you next time.